A dad drank 50 beers every day for six weeks. This is what happened to his brain. JW is a 42-year-old man presenting to the emergency room with status epilepticus, a 15-minute seizure. Nurses use medicine to terminate his seizure, but five minutes later, JW starts seizing again. This didn't face anyone because this is his second time presenting to the emergency room this month. JW was a dad. When his sons were young, he took them on a fishing trip. He told them he was gonna go get some bread and snacks for the fish, but he never came back. 12 years ago, JW started drinking every day. In the last few years, he had been admitted into the hospital 25 times for alcohol-related problems. He always told doctors about his boys and how excited he was to get better and be back in their lives. They're such good kids, he would say, but JW never got better. He always ended up back with his beer. About two months ago, medical staff leaving their shift from the emergency room would see JW on the street nearby, sitting on the floor, slumped over a pile of his own beer cans. No one could do anything about it. Day in and day out, JW didn't drink to his heart's content. He drank to just feel normal. 50 beers daily was his only dietary intake for more than a month, which gives us some clues as to what's happening to him. The medical team was familiar with drunk JW presenting to the emergency room, but this time, something's wrong. Alcohol is a nervous system depressant, meaning that it slows down all the processes of the brain. But a seizure is all of the brain processes firing off at the same time, opposite the action of a depressant. You don't usually seize when you're drunk at 42 years old. JW is still breathing. It doesn't look like he's ingested anything else. Drunk JW is not the person presenting to this emergency room this time meaning that something else is happening to him. It's possible he could be suffering from alcohol withdrawal. Chronic misuse of alcohol builds dependence. This is a time when structures in the brain adapt to the excess amounts of ethanol placed in the body. Areas of the brain that are supposed to insulate electrical signals are stimulated by the alcohol, meaning after repeat stimulation, more and more alcohol is needed to maintain the same level of inhibition. This is modulated by GABA, which is an important neurotransmitter, and excess ethanol induces insensitivity to it. So, more inhibitors needed to hold a constant inhibitory tone. This is called tolerance, but it's not done here. Alcohol also blocks a chemical in the brain called glutamate that excites the brain. So in this area, more structures that receive glutamate are constructed here in the hopes that alcohol can't block everything, and that some of that glutamate can get through because the brain needs that excitation to function normally. Chronic alcoholic's brain is physically changed after years of misuse, so if JW hasn't had a drink for a few hours, electrical signals aren't insulated anymore. The increased numbers of glutamate receptors aren't blocked anymore, so everything gets excited, resulting in status epilepticus, creating a dependency on alcohol. If he doesn't drink for just a short period of time, bad things happen to his brain. JW seizes for the sixth time, and nurses terminate it again. But how can we be sure that JW has alcohol withdrawal? In between seizures, JW is confused and disoriented. When asked when his last drink was, he can't even slur out an answer because he can't even say his own name. If his only dietary intake was 50 beers every day for weeks, then he has protein malnutrition. He has vitamin deficiency, which are well known to cause neurologic issues in chronic alcoholics. Both of these could be an easy fix though. If he needs vitamins, give him vitamins and make sure he doesn't stop receiving those vitamins. Proteins can also be important here too, but more urgently, a blood test reveals that JW has chronic hyponatremia. Hypo meaning low. Natri, referring to sodium, or more formally natrium, as shown by its symbol on the periodic table of elements, and emia, meaning presence in blood. Low sodium, presence in blood. Chronic, meaning that this has been developing on a time scale of several weeks now, pointing us back to the 50 beers that he drank every day that are sitting inside of his body at the moment. Hyponatremia can be the cause of his seizures too, which brings us to the next clue. 50 cans of beer is more than four and a half gallons of liquid that's been going into JW's body daily. Interestingly enough, in the emergency room, JW has barely made any urine at all, meaning that there really hasn't been a net flow out of his body. His body is holding on to all of that liquid, and it's not just from one day's worth of beer, it's a staggered accumulation over several weeks. But let's look at the name hyponatremia, low sodium presence in blood. 
Low sodium fits because in one can of beer, there's about only 10 milligrams of sodium. This is about as much sodium as in one cup of tap water. When natremia is measured, it's reported as the amount of sodium present divided by a volume of body water. So low sodium presence in blood can be caused by a large volume of fluid, like four and a half gallons of beer every day. But this also means that a low value can be caused by an actual low amount of sodium going into the body. Usually hyponatremia is a problem with water because that's harder for the body to balance when something is wrong. But if JW's only dietary intake for six weeks was 50 cans of beer daily, then this means that he has both a lot of water that he's holding onto and he has very little sodium in his body because beer doesn't really have salt in it. But sodium isn't the only electrolyte that matters here. Beer also doesn't have potassium. Potassium also has an influence on body water through its impact on urine production, but JW also has hypokalemia, or low potassium presence in blood, because of that beer. Both sodium and potassium electrolytes interplay with urea, which is a breakdown product of protein in the kidneys to help produce urine. And JW hasn't eaten any protein lately, although if he hasn't eaten for weeks, then his muscles should be wasting away in atrophy, and this could count as protein to make urea for urine, but that isn't happening because beer has carbs. Carbohydrates, which in the body are broken down to sugar and water. Sugar induces the response of insulin, an anabolic hormone which prevents the breakdown of muscle, meaning no urea is available for urine production, along with hyponatremia and hypokalemia. These are all causing him to hold on to all of that water because the kidneys need to exchange these when it makes urine. This beer potomania, pato from an ancient Greek word meaning to drink in mania, referring in this case to an excess, is a hypotonic hyponatremia that is causing all of JW's problems. Samples of the little urine that he's made since presenting to the emergency room were analyzed. No solutes were found, meaning that his urine was maximally dilute. But this should make sense. We've already established that he's got a lot of water inside of him. When someone is well hydrated, the urine is supposed to be dilute. But well hydrated in JW's case is an understatement. He should be bursting at the seams with fluid overload. He should be puffy and swollen everywhere. He should be peeing every couple of minutes. But he isn't. He looks mostly normal. So where exactly are those hundreds of cans of beer inside of his body? Well. Body water is supposed to have 0.9% sodium chloride. In the medical world, we call this isotonic. This means that for every one liter of water, there's nine grams of sodium chloride, which is this table salt. 0.9% is thousands of times more sodium content than beer. Most of the body's water isn't actually in the blood, it's inside of the cells, and it exists as 0.9% sodium chloride. Sodium creates something called an osmotic gradient, which means that wherever sodium is, water will flow towards it. In the small science experiment, I dissolve salt in this water and place it into a tube. I submerge the tube in a pool of water that has no salt dissolved in it, and you'll see that water flows into the tube. That water flows towards the sodium. So, if his body water has been diluted by hundreds of cans of beer, then it means that the water inside of his cells is saltier. And because water flows towards where there's sodium, then JW's body water is flowing into his cells. This would mean that his organs, like his liver and his intestines, are starting to swell with water. That should be okay, though, because the abdomen is soft. But what about the brain? It's enclosed in a hard space. The skull has only room for a brain expansion of 8% before it starts to crush up against the sides of the skull and ooze out into the sutures or the gaps of the skull, pinching blood flow as parts of JW's brain start to necrose or quite literally die. This damage upon brain expansion is known as herniation and means permanent brain damage in JW's case bringing us back to his seizures. If JW's hyponatremia is caused by a low daily intake of sodium, then simply just giving him salt is going to fix his problems. Interestingly enough, this is one of the few instances of hyponatremia where giving just salt is the fix. But the medical team can't give him tablets by mouth because he's disoriented. Giving him anything by mouth could cause him to choke. So he's given a small injection of 3% sodium chloride. 
Small injection because he doesn't need any more fluid, and 3% sodium chloride being saltier than isotonic 0.9% saline. Within a few hours, JW produces gallons of urine. His kidneys are able to exchange the salts for water as it starts pouring out of his body. His seizures stop and he regains consciousness while medicines are given for his alcohol withdrawal. The medical team repeat the 3% sodium chloride injection two more times throughout the day to help with the cerebral edema. As the days go by, JW's sodium levels normalize. He's in stable condition. He gets vitamins and proteins. He recovers and is well enough for discharge from the hospital. But just before doctors sign off on the discharge, JW complains of general weakness. His speech is slurred and incoherent. Neurology consult finds coordination deficits in JW. His movements in the limbs above his waist were uncoordinated with intended positioning often missing the target at varying lengths. This is called dysmetria. Dys meaning wrong and metria meaning length. Similarly, he had dysdietico-kinesia, meaning that his ability to perform rapid alternative movements was compromised. All of this pointing to some possible neurodegeneration in JW that has worsened since his hyponatremia was corrected days ago because he didn't have those problems back then. He's not ready to be discharged. As the hours go by, he becomes weak in all four limbs. Nurses ask him to move his arms and his legs, but no response. His muscles are floppy as his limbs become paralyzed, and an MRI of his brain reveals that JW has central pontine myelinolysis. Lysis meaning a breaking down of myelin, the conductive sheath that covers nerve cells, and central pontine referring to the central pons of the brain where it connects to the brainstem to deliver nerve impulses all throughout his body. If his hyponatremia has been corrected and JW has been sober for many days now under medical supervision, then how could he just suddenly become paralyzed? Well, do you remember the name chronic hyponatremia? Well, chronic means that his body has had low sodium presence in blood on a time scale of at least weeks to months because of that 50 beers only that he drank every day. When sodium presence in blood starts to decrease, water starts to flow into the cells pretty quickly. The brain does start to swell a bit in this initial phase, but the brain has an outlet called the cerebrospinal fluid, which flows into the spinal cord and cushions the brain inside of the skull. When hyponatremia is chronic, the swelling, even if it's slow, keeps happening, and the brain is forced to pump out organic salts, or carbon-containing salts, to further prevent the swelling. These organic salts are like sodium in that wherever they are, water will flow towards them too. So when they're out of the brain, water will follow them out. And because of this adaptation, this is why JW's brain doesn't immediately swell up after just a couple of weeks of drinking 50 beers every day, because as he was slowly losing sodium day by day, the adaptations in the brain were adjusting to the chronic hyponatremia. Sodium correction in a patient like JW is difficult because of all the metabolic derangements inside of his body, some of which are unmasked after initiation of therapy. His adapted brain started to shrink in the presence of sodium. Sodium and potassium rushed into his brain cells by design without the proper presence of those organic salts because those take time to get pumped back in to the brain cells. When there's a high sodium presence inside any cell, the DNA there starts to break. The cell thinks it's been mortally damaged and initiates programmed death because of those DNA breaks. This happens to all cells in the body and it's a defense mechanism against things like cancer. But in the brain cells, the myelin sheath in JW sloughs off and parts of his brain start to die again, leaving him paralyzed for life. Chronic hyponatremia is a completely different case from acute hyponatremia, where the brain hasn't had time to adapt, meaning that the correction in the case of acute can be quick and aggressive in an effort to save someone from the cerebral edema and the resulting brain herniation. Beer potomania can be difficult to identify if you don't know what you're looking for because electrolyte disturbances are just so common in chronic alcoholism and chronic alcoholics might not tell you exactly what happened because they might not even know themselves. About 18% of patients who have beer potomania are at risk of osmotic demyelination, and hypokalemia and hypophosphatemia are increased risk factors for it, especially since these patients are almost always severely malnourished, just like JW. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself, and be well.